And so Inhofe said, look, the, it's a fraud. It's a hoax amendment. It says is climate change real. Of course, it's always changing. So we voted to get the bill going forward because it's true. They wrote it as a scam. Of course, climate change happens. It's just not man-made or it's not a big deal. So, but sure enough, they're spinning it. Well, Republicans admit it's all real, deceiving their idiot audiences who love to be deceived. This radio broadcast, this TV transmission, this simulcast is not about staying on our one little reservation, liberal or conservative, and then only looking at information that validates what we're saying. That's what control left and control right do. We're full spectrum analysis going after the real agenda. And carbon taxes is a wealth redistribution system to the elite and to shut down their competition. Let's go to Lionel now of Lionel Media. Uh, he joins us. Uh, Lionel, there's so much to get to today in the limited time we have uh, with you. Uh, LionelMedia.com. But I wanted to get your take as a media analyst on all these propaganda films like Selma, and propaganda films like American Sniper. And now I, I knew Chris Call. I talked to him on and off air. I've debated him. I don't think he was a bad guy. I think he got sucked into something really scary, got told to go along with propaganda, and then got killed to cover it up. I don't know your take on it, but I know that uh, you were happy to come on and talk about it. Then we'll hit a few other issues. If you want to stay with us a little bit in the next hour or two, we'll go to these calls with Howard and others that are holding. Uh, but where do you want to go first, Lionel? Well, a couple of things, too. You know, uh, Alex, the, the notion of propaganda, the term has a pejorative uh, slant to it. It's been around since the 17th century. It was Pope Gregory from the Vatican. Propaganda from the verb or the gerund propagation to propagate a particular idea. To put something out is propaganda. Right, exactly. Now, in our country, from the days of Frank Capra and why we fight to Lenny uh, Riefenstahl, which is, of course, during the Hitler times, this is triumph of, of the will, Bernays and others, our efforts in battle, in geopolitics, have always been punctuated with uh, the media through the Signal Corps, through Frank Capra, probably the greatest proponent. So propaganda, I want to demystify that. That's number one. Number two, Alex, anybody who wears the uniform for this country, we should owe nothing but respect and admiration for. That being said, there is a meme that is being said constantly that Chris Kyle protects my freedom of speech, that somebody in Fallujah or Kandahar or somebody in the Helmand province, some insurgent is going to march into Cleveland and shut down radio stations, that every effort that the United States government involves itself in, involves protecting my constitutional freedoms. Now, while I respect the military, that meme, that connection is so dangerous in ensuring that the American public rubber stamp every future military activity because the propaganda that's being propounded is that they are there to protect us. And when you start thinking that, when you rubber stamp every single military adventure, every adventure or example of colonialism or imperialism, whatever it is, you're actually ensuring that more Americans will ultimately be killed. Now, what this was, was one of the greatest examples of propaganda ever. American sniper. And by the way, if you're as fascinated as I am, have you ever heard, uh, Alex, the, the history of Carlos Hathcock, the great marine sniper they're carlos, talking about world war ii in korea well this was also vietnam carlos hathcock gave the notion of the sniper you know michael moore and by the way look i don't want to play conspiracy god forbid but if michael moore is not a a government agent <laughs> or as we say in professional wrestling the heel to come in to stir up this pro military argument because michael moore is 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 the heel he's that he's the dupe that you always turn to to if the argument is not going your way bring in michael moore and he will galvanize people he will give he will give left cover to it he will be a foil to say something stupid to legitimize the other side that's getting torn up really bad precisely precisely now look at what happened look at the the last time we had a football game, the football, and this this wonderful transmutation of propaganda and the military and the flag and patriotism and the Star Spangled Banner and flyovers and uniforms and color guards 
for a sporting event. I don't know if any other international sporting team does it. I'm not that familiar with with soccer and football around the world, but it's perfect. And one of the things we have to- Well, the only place you see it was in Soviet uh, or, or Nazi uh, regimes. It's clearly totalitarian. And again, this is the globalist putting the military on death panels, letting an IBM robot called Thomas decide who doesn't get treatment. Uh, the government's preparing for war with the vets, but while saying we love them, we love them, they mean the the glory of the archetypal warrior is projected on the state. So the corrupt occupational state is projecting the glory of the male soldier, uh, which is under attack everywhere. The image of the male um, is under attack. Clint Eastwood or uh, people like... Um, John Wayne, God, Guts, and Guns is under attack, but you're allowed to have it when it's the military only promoting some globalist agenda. So exactly, we care about the military, but we realize it's a propaganda situation when every time they score in basketball or football, they cut to the military pavlovianly like, oh, you know, you just felt good because of the military. This is like training a chicken to tap the lever to get a little grain of wheat or something. This is classical brainwashing, and that's what the film American Sniper was, because Chris Kyle had to admit a bunch of his book was bull, and they, I saw the movie. It's like he's Jesus or something, and it's just not true. And, and Alex, in order for you, again, because I have, I, of course, tweet, you know, at Lionel Media, and people say, you don't understand something. You can't say anything to desecrate this man's uh, legacy. Nobody is. Well, let me explain something also, Alex. This goes to show you, and we talk about this all the time. I've got friends, you've got friends, and when you bring something up, what you just said, the classic pairing, the Freudian, this, this patellar connection of memes and, and archetypal visions and imagery, they're going to say, oh, God, there goes Alex Jones again with his conspiracy theories. But look at what my friends in sports are. As I discuss this, I'll say, hey, did you hear about deflate gate? About what? About, did you hear about Belichick soft balls? I didn't know what he was talking about. said, what about it? Yeah, you see, there's this thing, Alex, where they believe that he deliberately deflated the balls of the game. I said, and it's an inside job. I said, wait. I thought there was only one way to deflate the balls. <laughs> well, I thought it was another medical condition we got to worry about. So anyway. I'm looking at these people that I know, and there is no aspect to the intricacy of this conspiracy theory, the temperature, the weather. They don't mind conspiracy theories. This is bread and circuses. This is well, exactly. And if anybody that goes and takes a PhD level marketing class, or if anybody was ever in these big corporate meetings, and I've been in some of them, all they talk about is archetypes and manipulation and subliminals. Okay. That's been going on since the 40s in radio. The public just doesn't know the sciences are being used. Alex, you may not be uh, old enough to recall this, but I was just a just a youngin. But I remember my my parents took me to see Green Berets with John Wayne. That was one of the greatest propaganda films ever. Oh, I know. I've watched it now, and it's just sickeningly well, obvious. It's, it's, and it doesn't mean you're against the Green Berets or John Wayne. Oh. I love John Wayne and the Green Berets. Um, I know I know Green Berets people. This is just wonderful men, uh, patriots always that I've known. Right. The issue is, is that it is sickening propaganda. I mean, and Alex, when you, again, create this, you talk about the, the this archetypal connectivity and this the notion of these memes. Whenever you say that you must, whenever an American soldier, a Marine or whatever is involved, you must snap to attention and rubber stamp their activity. You know, let me explain something, Alex. Chris Kyle, again, we, anybody who, who, and I can't believe I have to even stop with these prefatory statements about, I'm, I'm sorry he died, he doesn't deserve, in fact, he died here, not even on the battlefield, but that's another story. The people, Alex, that are after my freedom of speech, the people that are after my ability to exercise my constitutional rights has never been an insurgent in Fallujah or the Helmand province, but my government. People who want to pass CISPA and SOPA, people who want to pass cybersecurity laws, people who put me in a panopticon, real world. Legislatures like Illinois saying don't film the police in public. Exactly. Absolutely. And, and here's the deal. They're just taking the troops, getting us to love them, which is easy to do. Archetypally, that's what we're meant to do You know, at a genetic level. Support the men going out to defend you. God, if you won't do that, you're dead. 
But, but our government's been seized. They're using them. It's our military saying no to arming al-Qaeda and ISIS. So the military themselves did the right thing, but the brass above them work for these globalists that are still doing it. So then they say, oh, be patriotic. Don't say our government's behind ISIS. Don't blame our military. Whenever I would question 9-11, Lionel, they would say, why do you think the firemen blew it up? And I go, I didn't say the firemen blew it up. There was a countdown. They blew up Building 7. I don't know who did it. Certainly not the fire department. So see, they play that game like, you're criticizing government. You don't like firefighters. Well, you know, Alex, what they also do is they'll say, well, what about this or what about that? Or if you question somebody, say, well, where did all those people go? I tell people, it's your story, tell me. But here's the thing that's very interesting. Throughout our history, again, because remember, you know, Tolstoy said history would be a wonderful thing if only it were true. What we call history today, if I told somebody, I said, who was the person who was responsible for alerting the, uh, the, the patriots that the British were coming? I guarantee you a thousand people would say Paul Revere. And it wasn't. Tell us who it was when we come back. He just okay. relayed the message. Stay there. We'll be right back. This hour and many others stay right there. And we've. Uh, this is so frustrating because to get into history is a complex issue, but it's also simple at the same time. Read a wide spectrum of history, and then you'll get both sides or all the different sides. But what I found is when you read 300, 400, 500 page mainline history books, like Rise and Fall of the Third Reich or Order of the Death Shed, or the declassified British report on Hitler. It's actually in there that the British funded Hitler. It's actually in there that all this stuff went on. It's just not in pop history. Pop history that you see being pushed by the system is what's really twisted. So often, historians are so arrogant, they don't even want to be censored. They want to actually put in there both sides of what happened but that never gets picked up by the public because they don't read. Lionel, get into your story about Paul Revere. Very quickly, uh, if, if you ask uh, people what they think or who was the person who was responsible for alerting you know, the patriots, they would say Paul Revere. Nobody would ever say Israel Bissell because Paul Revere was the creation of Longfellow. Now, even then, now when you go back to the myth and the memes of the military, I've got two examples of two names, Jessica Lynch and Pat Tillman. Now, Pat Tillman was doing absolutely great. It was a billion dollars worth of advertising for the military. Here's a guy who was making millions of dollars in the NFL who leaves to join his brother to fight for the noble cause. Alex, you can't beat that. We had that in World War II with Jimmy Stewart and Clark Gable and others, but this was the real McCoy. He gets to Afghanistan, he gets wherever, he becomes a ranger, he becomes a, a top-notch uh, soldier, and he writes back and he says, the war is a lie. Lo and behold, accidentally, he's dispatched. Then you have Jessica Lynch, another one. You could, with Jerry Bruckheimer, actually writing out the script for this. And what's amazing also is that even then, Alex, you and I and a lot of people said, wait a minute, this story doesn't ring true. It doesn't matter. Because like they say from the, from the great, uh, the man who shot Liberty Valance, when the legend becomes fact, print the legend. We're not going to go back and destroy this meme, this idea. Jessica Lynch was a fraud. She even said so. And the people around her who happened to say, well, that may not have happened, they're dispatched as well. So what I don't understand is simply this. You know, Alex, there are people who have a worldview, and they don't want to have that worldview affected. The other night during the State of the Union, when Obama was out there speaking, I went and I took actual excerpts from George W. Bush's past State of the Union addresses. And on Facebook, I would quote them. And Obama folks said, that's brilliant. That's why we love this band. I said, go ahead and Google that. And they said, oh, this is a skins and, and shirts uh, world. This is Mets and Yankees. This has nothing to do about facts and realities. There is a meme right now. There is the idea of the military. And it is almost talismanic and if you want to believe in the united states which i think all of us do at least the fundamentals of it you must never question anybody who is presented to you as a hero because if you question either the veracity of the claim or what happened or the cause somehow you're denigrating a man's history and what i also say again as long as we rubber stamp every single military action support them absolutely but when we say that all wars are, 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 are valid, all centurions are, are We've valid. now turned into a total 
third world cesspit once we do that. And, and just putting a cherry on top of this, what was Private Lynch about? It was about getting women in the military and saying they fought better than men. It was also a giant fraud in social engineering. Pat Tillman was exposing government drug dealing. They killed him. It came out. And it's the same thing with Kyle. I, I'm sure of it. The story was unraveling. Ventura was suing him. They killed Kyle, folks. They murdered him. The very people that are now using him to a dead hero is even better. They killed him. GCN to make him a hero at the end of the movie. Cells become toxic, they die early, and aging sets in. No one has put together a formula that focuses directly on brain health, nerve growth factors, and optimizing your cellular energy at the same time. Just one of the key compounds, BioPQQ, is backed by major clinical studies. You want the best that's out there at the lowest price anywhere? We now have the synergistic solution. Secure your DNA force today at InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. The average person's life is filled with unexpected challenges. Unlock the energy it takes to defeat these daily beasts with super male or super female vitality. Specifically designed to assist the body in regulating proper hormone balance to create superior vitality in males and females. Supercharge and conquer your world at InfoWarsLife.com or call 1-88-253-3139. You're listening to The Alex Jones Show. Big Brother. Mainstream media. Government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, and now live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. All right, let's go right back to Lionel. He's with us till 20 after. We're taking your phone calls. Before he leaves us, he'll give us his take on Selma. I've not seen it yet. I think Martin Luther King did a lot of great things. That said, uh, I, I've read the cheat sheet on it. And it's being brought out at this point, this time, to further exacerbate racial tensions, all part of the George Soros backdrop. That's my view. I don't know Lionel's view on it. I know he wants to review it. So we'll get his take on that in the next segment. Right now, Howard in Illinois, thank you for holding. Uh, you're on the air worldwide. Hey, Alex and Lionel. Welcome. Oh, thank you. Well, thank uh, you, brother. I just wanted to talk to you a minute about the InfoWars Freedoms of America pamphlet. Do you know about that? No. I mean, I know that we put a free citizen rule book in all orders. It's got the Declaration of Independence, Constitution, famous quotes, stuff like that. Uh, what are you talking about? Well, I'm, I'm talking about this pamphlet you should come out with that would have uh, the top ten things that the government's lying to us about, <laughs> like Obamacare, gun control. Please you know, that's a great idea, like a simple 20, 30-page pamphlet that's inexpensive, that folks can buy at cost, uh, that just has the big lies and, and, and then solutions, uh, and then some websites that uh, have uh, educational videos on them. That would be great to hand out to people. Well, if you print them up, I'll, I'll order 100, and I'll hand them out to 100 of my friends and strangers both. Yeah, I uh, would fashion them almost after chick tracks. Maybe even have uh, some uh, cartoons or illustrations in it as well. I want to do it. It's 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 on the back burner. I've been to do it for years. But yes, sir, we should do that. Also, uh, maybe some pamphlets for the police for us to hand to the police and say, hey, we're not in a war with you. No, we're that's a great a idea to boil people. down the globalist plan. And, and the cops really click to it because they're already in it. They're somewhat decompartmentalized because they already have inside scoops on a lot of stuff. And they want the next level of decompartmentalization. Then when they get our intel, go check for themselves and find out it's true. Our credibility just goes up, 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 up. That's a problem the establishment has because we have penetrated the compartmentalization of the military and police. I mean, they are the easiest to wake up, a natural ally to freedom, if we'll just stop hating them and reach out to them. That doesn't mean they're all going to want to be woken up just like the general public. But statistically, I've seen it and I've experienced it. I think I get chills talking about it. We can really beat the globalist. We've just got to believe we can do it. Lionel, any comments on what Howard's saying? 
Well, my comment would be to have the top 10 things that the government is lying about, you need the top 1,000, because the idea of that would be a, a rather daunting uh, cause. You know, Alex, you mentioned something before about global warming. Global warming and, global, and, and climate change is a religion. Nobody has any idea of the second part about that, because what I tell people, and just going back to what you said, I will concede, I will stipulate to global change, global warming, I don't really care about that. What about the carbon trading part? What about the carbon taxing part? What about the Marie Strong Al Gore contingent? And you get the look of, what are you talking about? Because the issue is critical thinking says, I'm not arguing about this, just like I'm not arguing about whether we should honor the military. I'm not arguing whether we respect the police. When I talk about a particular aspect of a huge subject matter, well, they're doing the same thing. They're saying, do not question or, or, or we're going to arrest you in Europe. This is a religion. Everyone agrees. Man-made global warming, pay Al Gore money. Well, no, not everyone agrees. It, 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 and it's been proven to be a fraud that man is a huge contributor. It's the sun. And also, if you look at how ice caps are, are melting on Mars and others, Alex, I have friends of mine who have taken it upon for you to, do, for you to even challenge the proposition that maybe this might be a tad exaggerated. It's like me challenging their mother's a chastity or, 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 or their religion or their faith in something. And what they'll do is, Alex, they'll always say this. How can you tell me that all of these scientists, all of these, and I'm saying, what scientists? And they have a kind of an idea about that. Exactly. Look. Stay there. We're going to come back with calls. They've been saying for 20 years, man-made global warming is real. It's going to kill everybody unless we have a global government and regulate and surveil all human activity and tax humans for the carbon dioxide that they exhale. That's a New York Times headline, a tax on breathing. It's now here. The taxes are going in in California. The taxes have devastated Australia. Now they're trying to implement outside of Congress passing a law. We've got Mark Moreno of Climate Depot popping in at the bottom of the hour to talk about the shock vote on the surface in the Senate were 98 to 1. There was one abstention. One person wasn't there. 98 to 1 out of 100 senators voted that climate change is real. But notice, Senator Inhofe said, well, I had to vote because it was up for a vote. I have his quotes here. They played a trick where, of course, we agree that there's climate change. The climate's always changing. So we had a vote and had to vote, but it's a scam because it didn't say man-made climate change. Mark Moreno was his former chief of staff and advisor. So we've got Mark Moreno joining us, formerly worked for Senator Inhofe and advised the Senate at climatedepot.com. He's going to be joining us to talk about this. But sure enough, this morning, I knew it driving in. I said, let me just see. And I dialed around on AM. They weren't talking about it. Went over to NPR. And they must be saying it every 10 minutes. Well, the Senate voted 98 to 1. The Republicans admit climate change is real. We need to do something about it. That was the lie. And they're going to just sit there and tell their idiot listeners, see, all scientists agree, and even all the senators, but one kook from Louisiana, you know those dummies in the South. Yeah, that's just the way it is. I want to go to Riley and others. We've got to go to calls quick here, but you were getting into that, Lionel, uh, media analyst. Uh, um, I, I'm, I'm moving too quick here. Then I also want to get into uh, your review of Selma, but go ahead. We made a couple of things. You know, Alex, uh, you, you and I realize the importance of language. And I don't want to overplay this, but when President Obama was running, he said, hope and change. I want change. I want change. I want change. And I, at the time, was with a group of friends and I said, do you mean change or improvement? And they thought I was being a bit uh, uh, callous about this. If I said, Mr. Uh, Mr. Jones, your, your tumor has changed, you wouldn't say, all right, thank you, doc. You would say, whoa, 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 what do you mean change? Has it improved? Has it gotten better? Climate change. Now, I'm, I'm not in any way trying to belabor the point here, but even the term leaves itself for wiggle room. And I got to say this one thing, Alex, just because memes build up a, a momentum, myths and the like. Let's take Hollywood. People were saying about Selma, Hollywood is racist. And so-and-so and, -so and this particular leader is going to go to Hollywood and sit down and talk to these people. By the way, the same people who hated conspiracy theories thought absolutely that the Sony hack was an inside job. It's funny how the concept of conspiracies are not a problem. So we're going to go to Hollywood. We're going to say, hey, how come Selma, how come you're a racist? How come you did this? 
And Hollywood turned around and said, last year, 12 years a slave, it won every award there was. Oh, well, that's different. Well, Hollywood's liberal. Wait a minute. This year, American Sniper. Supposedly, Hollywood hates Clint Eastwood, hates shoot 'em ups hates war propaganda. Hollywood loves this. You see, Alex, people will just make up whatever they want to say so that their worldview fits into it. Exactly, and we don't do that. We get accused of being conspiracy theorists, where I really try to look at each case, study it, and come up with what is the most common sense, accurate analysis. But when you look at Hollywood, it's just whatever agenda they want, and it's clearly propaganda. Let's go. Yes, sir. And then when Selma doesn't get enough nominations, it's racist as well. I mean, it's ridiculous. Uh, let's go to Riley in Iowa. Thank you for holding. Go ahead. Hey, uh, good to be on with you guys. Um, good, good to have you. Just a quick comment, and then let's talk about the driving force of propaganda. It was sort of revealed to me watching that Mike Dice video on MLK. Okay. But a quick comment. Climate and weather is defined as long-term patterns or change. So the topic of climate change seems pretty redundant to me because it's built into the Because definition. weather changes. Yeah, first it's global freezing, then global warming man-made, anthropogenic. Then when that's disproven, they just go change, change. I mean, soon yeah. they'll teach that there were, that there were never uh, cycles or, or never seasons. Yeah, so let's move on there because that's kind of redundant, so I don't want to spend time there. But I posted on my blog. It's Upright Riley. You can find it on Facebook, yada, yada. But it's based on Mark Dice's video that you posted. The blog is focused on the driving force of propaganda, which is suggestibility. The people in the video were only suggested that MLK was going to be put on Mount Rushmore, and they were just sucked into the lie only because it was suggested. And here's the No, that's right. They that. just want to comply. So Martin Luther King died today. Uh, and he was the first black man to walk on the moon, and he was a Confederate general. Uh, and and the people are there agreeing, going, oh, yes, that's wonderful. I'm glad he's a Confederate general. It just shows they're zombies. They're in a trance state, highly suggestible, being raised on television. That's the paradigm. You just hit it. Well, you know, Alex, yeah. if I could add something. I'm, I'm sorry. What, next, Lionel, you don't believe he was the first black man to walk on the moon? What's no, wrong with that? Let's, let's honor black people and build them up. What, you don't think we can have black doctors and black astronauts? Why are you now being racist against Martin Luther King? He was the first man to walk on the moon. See how that works? Don't you dare say Chris Kyle wasn't who they said he was. You know, one of the best things, Alex, I thought, going back about how people, how we meme, you know, remember, if ever you're killed or shot by the police, you better say something pithy that somebody can put in a hashtag on their hand or else you're not going to get a movement. If you say, oh, blank, when you're shot, guess what? You're out of luck. When Charlie Hebdo came up and the people that I know were holding up pencils, holding up pencils, and I asked the question, have you seen the, quote, cartoons in Charlie Hebdo? Have you seen them? No, I said, well, I'll tell you what, why don't you take that pencil and you sign this contract? Swear to me that you will put any cartoon that I pick from Charlie Hebdo in your school newspaper or your local newspaper, this thing. So it goes to show you that they had no idea. All they know is the meme started. The actual quanta of information, the data. Well, I mean, it does show Muhammad. Give, uh, I don't want to be vulgar with children listening, but it shows Muhammad performing oral sex on men right. and stuff like that. And we are the United States of politically correct. The people that I know who are the prototypical professional left, those individuals who will parse words about the way a particular ethnicity is depicted in a cartoon on TV, would not post the same cartoon that they are protesting in support of. And they cannot also understand that you can support the military, support the soldiers, but be against the war. You could support freedom of speech, but not like a particular expression of that. You can support a particular idea. Yeah, they say free speech is agreeing with whatever they say. When you counter it, they go, how or dare you hate speech me? No, no, I don't have to agree with you. We've got to go to other callers, but thank you, okay. Riley. Great points. Uh, very smart audience out there. Really impressive. Uh, let's go to Larry in Tennessee, listening on 94.3 FM WNFZ. Uh, go ahead, Larry, you're on the air. Hello, Alex. How you doing today? Good, brother. Go ahead. Hey, first of all, I just want to thank you. My family and I want to thank you for all the hard work that you do day in and day out. And we do support your radio show by uh, purchasing your products. Uh, but anyway, I have some pretty interesting information that 
Um, I, well, I was blown away last week. Uh, we just relocated from Florida after basically listening to your radio show here a few years ago. At first, I thought you were absolutely nuts. Uh, now I'm the one that's nuts, according to my in-laws, but who cares? I don't care. But well, that's what I found. Anyway, when people yeah. listen for a few years and actually check into what I'm saying, they tend to get more radical than even I am uh, generally, and then I get criticized for not being hardcore enough. Right on, though. <laughs> You're right on, brother. Well, thank you, my friend. But, 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 but anyway, uh, it's time for me to uh, switch my driver's license over from Florida to Tennessee. Uh, so I call up the uh, local license branch, and I ask them, you know, what information do I need to bring in to transfer my driver's license? Well, when they answered the phone, I looked the number up, and it said the local uh, DMV. Uh, well, when I called the phone, uh, the phone number, uh, they answered as Homeland Security. I thought I dialed the wrong number. No, that's right. The feds have taken everything over, basically. Uh, national ID card, everything. It, it's all centralized now. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, I just thought it was kind of kind of weird. I mean, watch my film America Destroyed by Design, 1997. We show all the executive orders, all of it. <coughs> Excuse me. It just took them 10 years or so to get it in place. And then now it's all covertly being done. And illegals get to get driver's license in most states with no ID or a fake Mexican ID. But you've got to show a bunch of forms of identification. I'm going to skip this network break and keep Lionel with us when we get to all these calls and uh, get his analysis of this. But uh, finish up what happened when you called the local number for the DMV and got Homeland Security. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it was just very – and they went on and gave me a long list. Like you were saying, you know, we, we got to provide – all this documentation that we are actually American citizen. We Driver's license, social Tennessee. security number, bank yeah, statements. Uh, yeah, yeah. Marriage certificates, uh, all this stuff. And, <laughs> and, and you know. And, well, just and, tell and them you're an illegal different. alien. But then they'll arrest you well, saying you engaged in fraud. So don't tell there them that. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I'm waiting now to get pulled over by the local police because I have Infowars.com stickers all over my bumper. <laughs> well, you'll probably get pulled over, and they'll uh, tell you how wonderful you are. I mean, yeah, most yeah, police exactly. most police like the show. Yeah, but anyway, I won't keep you long, Alex. i got to go to work here pretty soon anyway. But there's there's another thing. Uh, a friend of mine came to work here a couple of weeks ago, and I was explaining to him uh, actually about what my experience with the license branch. But he, he brought he, – he goes to a local Baptist church, small Baptist church here in Tennessee, small town. Uh, he brought picture. They took video of three SUVs with cameras on the dash across the parking lot of the church, and they were Homeland Security, videotaping the church. Yep. So he says he had pictures of it. No, that's what Homeland Security does is go spies on mainline churches, you name it, uh, and they're creating databases. This is the secret police. That's why the Homeland Security people are freaking out because they now understand they're becoming a totalitarian group. So just as Homeland Security is a big problem, it's also a big pool of people that are awake because they know what's going on. Oh, exactly. And like I mean, I can said, you imagine being Homeland Security and spying on Baptist churches because Holder is targeting thousands of Christian churches to create a chilling effect so they won't stand up for, for, for pro-life? Remember, but mosques are out of the question. And I'm not advocating that either. But understand the sensitivity that has been exhibited by this government to never ever infiltrate a mosque and i thought okay fine but if it's a baptist church if it's another form of religion well that's okay is that consistent i don't think so there is an open homeland security through the irs war on christians mainline christians i mean two years ago when army intelligence sent me some intel that wasn't classified they don't send me classified stuff and it was army psyops at fort hood they said no go ahead and tell people we don't care and I was, are you, are you kidding? And then they said, no, we're sick of it. And then I ran into a whole other group of PSYOPs. Of course, Fort Hood's so big, there's a lot of different PSYOP groups, where they were told, you are not allowed to be an evangelical or give money, and you're not allowed to be in the Tea Party, or you may be court-martialed. Fox News picked it up and said, is this okay? So that's the supposed conservative standing up. Well, is it good? They're saying Christians are terrorists? Mainline evangelicals. That is a test to see what the military would do. And of course, the military freaked out. They have a First Amendment. But, but this is going on. I couldn't believe it when we first got the documents and we called the commanding general about it and they did not deny it. So imagine, Homeland Security, did, that wasn't even secret. Imagine you're at Fort Hood and you're told 
you will not go to evangelical church. What? I mean, this is beyond the Soviet Union. What do you say to that, Lionel? You know, Alex, I don't think there is anything that the American people could ever hear in terms of a new show that was validated on any program or any network that would so much as cause a flutter of concern or worry. I believe that through systematic habituation to one example of excess after another, that the American people have been basically numbed by this, have been habituated, have been conditioned, so that if you were to tell them anything, that's why the government said, go ahead, see what happens, nothing. But if you suggest that footballs were underinflated, that is going to cause a hashtag deflate gate. Alex, I'm not kidding. What this country is concerned about what gets our attention, what becomes viral, what becomes faddish, what becomes part of our culture, and what is excluded. And by the way, let me just say one more thing. The word homeland was not picked out of the blue. That word homeland has a very serious historical currency. And I ask everybody to Google that. Well, there's Google multiple the ones, but give me the one you want to focus on. It's always an imperial term for the center of the authoritarian empire going back to Rome. The Nazis called it Reichland uh, or the land of the people. Uh, and the Soviets call it the motherland. You cannot get more totalitarian. Uh, they're just going with the open, uh, open totalitarian creeds because they've worked in taking over before. What's your angle on it? And well, uh, and let me just say one thing. What it, what America says today, whenever uh, and, and, uh, and not not all America, but but a significant portion of it, whenever it does not like what you're saying, you're crazy. That's that Alex Jones guy. He's crazy. In a similar notion, it was just revealed that there may be hundreds of thousands of documents that have been released regarding extraterrestrial contact. Now, that might very well be the Watergate of the millennium. Do you know what that would do to American and world interest in little national jurisdictional issues compared to the universe? And the first thing that is ever said in conjunction with any subject about extraterrestrials or interplanetary is crazy. As if you're not supposed to question that we're uh, not alone in the universe. I mean, obviously, what? they've photographed hundreds of billions of galaxies. Every culture said stuff was going on. Call it demons, whatever you want. The point is, it's not crazy to question, are we alone? It's in a lot of government documents. I don't go there because there's, look, I can't get people to admit FEMA camps <laughs> when they're declassified under the Emergency Centers Establishment Act. And under civilian inmate labor camp program, Rex 84, garden plot, cable splicer. I just gave all the public names. You can go to army.mil and read it right now. People won't believe that. So they're not going to believe, you know, there's little guys coming from Mars. But, but you're, you're, you're absolutely right. And Alex, remember this. If you tomorrow said, ladies and gentlemen, I have something that you're not going to believe. I have an actual tape, a videotape or a film of the actual shooter of President Kennedy. On November the 22nd. And let's assume everybody said, yes, it's Lucien Sarti or whoever it was. Nobody would care. Nobody. Because something has happened to our, what we accept and what we reject. There's a pocket of us, a group of us who loves to, they're called skeptics, by the way, and they love to just reject whole cloth. Let me tell you something. The other day, driving to Albany, New York, I looked up in the sky, and Alex, it looked like, I don't know, what some people might call geoengineering or chemtrails or whatever. So I turned to my friend who was driving. I said, you see that? I said, what do you think that is? He says, that's jet exhaust. I said, maybe. I said, it might be something called a contrail or geoengineering. Let's see how long these last in the sky. If they're there for two, three, four hours, that's another story. As we were looking at this, and my friend who has never heard of it, never read anything about it, forget nanoparticulates and geo, nothing. He said, well, what are you getting at? I said, I'm not getting at anything. Look, and even that which he looked at and could see, Alex, there were jets, like hashtags, like tic-tac-toe, flying, where are they going? What's going? He was saying, 
Oh, what are you getting at? And I said, like you're saying, look, I'm not, this isn't an article I'm giving you. Look. Meanwhile, it's declassified that it's compartmentalized and being added by three major companies to the jet fuel. So the pilots and folks don't even know that it's aerosolized out of the engines. Bill Gates runs the program and they spend $5 billion a year at the Department of Energy alone. The Earth is 30% darker now, according to NASA. They say from contrails, persistent contrails. No, they're not persistent. And we know there's real contrails, ice crystals. My dad's a pilot. The right. point is these programs are real, but they go, where's a document on chemtrails? Right. Well, it's right. like, where's a document on FEMA camps? They're not called chemtrails. They're not called FEMA camps. It's called geoengineering programs. Right. And China and Dubai and Russia admit they do it. Okay? And yeah. But understand, though, as we're looking at this, <laughs> this is other people. So if you we remember, the, the government can tell you, Jones, release whatever you want. Here, go take your cruise of FEMA, whatever it is. Nobody cares. But talk about underinflated footballs or talk about a hacked movie or talk about some duck playing the piano or a neck <laughs> I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't, <laughs> that will get our attention. That'll be viral. Something has happened to the way we process things that matter. Something has happened to our alarm mechanism. A switch has been flipped, the people are lazy, and they've been subliminally triggered on record to not respond to real issues and to respond to, to, to phony ones, and, and they're not humans. They're not, they're not conscious anymore. But They've given over their conscience. I got to go to another call here. We had a caller holding for an hour from Illinois. He hung up. I apologize, but we've got unlimited calls, so that's what happens. Dan in Nebraska, thanks for holding her on the air with Lionel. Hi, thanks very much. I uh, really appreciate uh, Lionel's uh, assessment of the movie and uh, uh, making out these, uh, fic these, these heroes, these propaganda heroes as, as heroes that are fighting for our rights. I wanted to uh, bring your kind attention to Reverend Pinckney in uh, Michigan, who is fighting for our rights every day. Right now he's in prison, still fighting for our rights. He, he tried to uh, 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 fight the emergency managers in Michigan, and he was arrested on felony counts uh, for uh, uh, changing the dates on his petitions. And now this uh, man of the cloth, just like Reverend Martin Luther King, is in prison, uh, wasting away uh, because of his political actions. I'll look into that. Yeah, there's another really reporter fine. who's going to be sentenced today for retweeting a threat, just covering it. I mean, it's really scary how the, 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 they're persecuting people. Thank you, Dan. We're going to go to Josh, wants to talk about George Soros and weaponized marijuana. And we got Nelson, wants to talk about waking people up. Robert's a vet, wants to talk about militarizing police. We'll go to him first. After we talk to Moreno, Mark Moreno, for about 10 minutes about this debacle in the Senate voting uh, on climate change. Stay with us. Thank you, Lionel. We're on the march. The Empire's on the run. Alex Jones and the GCN Radio Network.